Hello class, my name is Jessica Berry and I am in your class, of course, R1101 and my instructor is Miss Peggy Blood and I have honestly learned quite a bit from this class. I must admit that there are many topics that I find myself very interested in as far as African, not African American art, but um, Native American art, and basically one of our papers where we had to do a compare, a comparison, and a contrast paper. Um, it was very interesting to me to learn that just it's not just African Americans who are dehumanized, who were dehumanized at least. They went through a lot, a lot, like just as well as we did. So it was very interesting for me to actually take the time and research the topic. And I had, I decided to compare and contrast African American art as well as their struggles, their struggles and Native American art as well as their struggles it was both arts are well both visual arts are beautiful but in native american art i find that it's a lot of grief like in my personal opinion it's a lot of grief but that is not what i have my presentation on that's just something brief that i found very interesting that i was very interested in Okay, I would like to talk about the timing of the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance got its greatest start around 1920, and this lasted, I would like to say, until about 1940. The late 30s, but I'll just round it off and say 1940. Um, some of the, well, the NAACP played a big role in this era. Um, activists such as W.E.B. Du Bois and James Weldon Johnson were participants in this era. Um, as far as literary works, there is a... writing from a literary work from Elaine Locke and it's called The New Negro honestly I did not read this in art but I did read this in African American literature and it played a big role in the Harlem Renaissance era for African American people Basically, Elaine Locke shared his personal opinion about Negroes at this time, and he named them the New Negroes. Funny to me because I always thought that if I'm going to be called anything new, well, not in, for me, but for this era, if they were to be called anything new, it should have been something different without the term Negro. But I want to talk about how he spoke about their self-respect and their self-dependence. He said, from my book, with this renewed self-respect and self-dependence, the life of the Negro community is bound to enter a new dynamic phase. The buoyancy from the compensating for whatever pressure there may be of conditions from without. And before he speaks, before the Harlem Renaissance and the actual finding oneself that they may refer to, this is how he spoke about black people. So for generations in the mind of America, the Negro has been more of a formula than a human being, a something to be argued about, 
condemned or defended, to be kept down or in his place, or helped, to be worried with or worried over, harassed or patronized, a social boogie or a social burden. The thinking Negro even has been induced to share this same general attitude, to focus his attention on controversial issues, to see himself in the distorted perspective of a social problem. His shadow, so to speak, has been more real to him than his personality. Such a change in time, I like to think. But as far as visual artists goes, I came, well not came in contact, but I did research a woman by the name of Meta Warwick. She has a portrait by the name of Ethiopia Awakening. It is a very beautiful portrait because it portrays a woman with mummy wrappings around the bottom of her legs. But the top of her torso and the top of her body, it portrays her in a reawakening stance from a long sleep. But it, to me, it portrays new life. So, so, so just to say that maybe, in my opinion, to interpret this whole, to interpret that portrait, I would say that even though the black woman is being held down and restricted she's still free and I would like I, I'm pretty sure that that portrait isn't just targeting women but in this era it had to portray the African American race as a whole I haven't went too deep into the too deep into actually researching everything about um this portrait but just seeing it alone and seeing what it represents meant a lot for me and just like lot spoke about negroes before well before the harlem renaissance this portrait and that literary work goes perfectly because to me it speaks of the African American race actually finding themselves and bringing about a culture for themselves and actually bringing about importance of the African American race. Because up until the Harlem Renaissance, it was as if, like, well, I like said, your shadow meant more. <laughs> and it's sad to say that, that people actually had to live like that. But because of the Renaissance, because of the Civil Rights Movement, because of different times in history, we have our culture today. And I appreciate it through art, through literary works, through jazz, through blues, through whatever was created in history to express our culture. I appreciate. That's my presentation. Please leave your comments and have a great day.